Welcome to the final episode of this season's Real Encounters with God. Today, we're going to start on a boat and end on a road. And we're looking at the warrior of Jesus today. I'm on right now, it's known as the Sea of Galilee. It's actually a large lake, the largest freshwater lake in Israel and the lowest freshwater lake in the entire world. It's pretty darn big. This region is where Jesus spent his time, most of his time, building into people, praying for people, teaching people. And it was right here in Capernaum. This is his adopted hometown, Capernaum, a place that means comfort, where a chain of events took off that shows the war that he was a part of. Oftentimes he would be speaking, people would be coming around him, crowding around him, he would, he would get further and further into the water as they would crowd him. And sometimes he would just get on a boat and he got in a boat so that people couldn't get any closer to him because then they'd drown, right? They'd be coming closer, closer, closer. I got you, I'm on a boat, you can't come get me. He would be on a boat to sort of have a level of distance and, and comfort for himself. So I understand that Jesus, when he was done speaking, he was hurting. He was at the end of his rope. He would get with his friends and he would get on a boat with his friends and he would actually get ready for another battle on the other side of the lake and on the way, he'd take a nap. In the book of Mark we read, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus is sleeping, as that verse says, Jesus is sleeping and all of a sudden, the disciples are screaming, screaming. And they wake him up and he, he gets up and the boat is jostling around up and down all over the place. He says he stands up in the boat and he puts his hands out and says, wind, waves, peace, be still. And it comes down. Specifically, what it says is he rebukes the wind and the waves. He speaks to wind, speaks to wind. Now stop it, cut it out now, stop it, stop it, stop. Rebukes them. Why use the word rebuke? When using the word rebuke, we're seeing here, there's something in the spiritual realm that's kicking up physical matter and he rebukes it and it goes down. We started this episode on a boat and now we're gonna end it on a road, specifically what's known as the road to Emmaus. And I'm right now on this path and you might actually hear the calamity of a road that's off to my left. God meets us in the roads that we're in right now, no matter how stressful or how busy they are. And the disciples, some of the disciples, get met by Jesus in Luke chapter 24. They're not ready for this. They're not expecting it. It's not till later on that these disciples who he's walking with on the road to Emmaus, who meet him in their place, it's not until later on at night where they go, oh my gosh, I recognize it's you. These disciples have their doubts. They're not expecting it, but bam, God shows up. You may have some doubts right now. That's okay. God will accept you. He will walk with you, even in the midst of your doubts. You may have been hearing from God, and you may not even realize you've been hearing from God. Maybe you've had a thought that keeps going through your mind and running through your mind. Maybe it's God who's been putting that thought in your mind. Maybe something keeps happening to you in your life. It's like you're on the same path over and over. Maybe it's because God is taking you to that path and He's walking with you in that path. And right now is your Emmaus moment. Right now is when you can have the scales drop off your eyes 
you can recognize, man, the one who fought for me, the one who died for me, that one could give me life. The book of Romans says the same spirit who rose him from the dead can give life to your body. There is nothing, nowhere you can go to escape the love of God, to escape the power of God. I wanna invite you right now to have a road to a Emmaus experience with Jesus. We're gonna take some time. I just want you to be still. I want you to notice your thoughts. I want you to notice what you're feeling. I want you to notice what you say to him and give God the space to direct you to experience Him and maybe for the first time to receive Him.